Hey everybody, 1964, great song written by Bob Dylan called One Too Many Mornings. I've always loved it. It was included on his album, uh, The Times They Are Changing, and uh, he must have liked it too, because even though he didn't perform it live in 64 or 65, but starting in 66, he did perform it live, and he performed it live 237 times from 66 all the way to 2005. The song, uh, generally speaking, uh, or a lot of people believe, and it probably is true, that the song is about the ending of his relationship with his girlfriend at the time, Susie. And, um, but you know, it, 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 that's true. I, I'm sure that's probably what it was. And <clears throat> that's probably why he didn't sing it in 64 and 65, you know. But anyhow, a little later, he of course on the 66 tour. Uh, he sang it and uh, put a lot of emphasis on certain words and lines and very passionate performance that he gave at the time. It almost seems like he could be talking about the ending of any relationship, perhaps the relationship he had with, uh, between him and uh, the folk purists at the time that he was trying to break from or whatever. Um, it's definitely a song you can apply to different things, and that's why I'm anxious to know what you guys think when you hear the song. Not only, not only what you think it means, but what does it conjure up to you personally? Because it's one of those songs that can do it. It's open-ended enough it could do that for you. Uh, he sang it uh, with the basement, with the band, the basement tapes. Um, he sang it uh, 10 years later, 1976, on the Hard Rain tour. Fantastic performance. And many times since then, up to 2005. He hasn't performed it live since then. Great song, 1964. He wrote another song in 1964, which is generally considered to be also be about Susie. And that was a song called Mama, You've Been On My Mind, which was an outtake from the other 64 album, Another Side of Bob Dylan. So I'll talk about that one here a little bit too. So let's just go through the song because it's definitely worth talking about. It's a lot of fun. All right, and, and it's a simple song. you got three stanzas and it doesn't seem to be uh, complicated or anything, but there's some interesting things that, make, that I think about when I hear the song. And uh, let me know what you think about. Down the street, the dogs are barking, and the day is getting dark. As the night comes in a falling, the dogs will lose their bark. Now that's pretty straightforward. The dogs are barking, it's getting dark. When, the, when it finally gets dark, the dogs will stop barking. <laughs> right, right. I love that line, uh, the night comes in a falling. Whenever I hear that, it reminds me of my favorite, well, one of my favorite Longfellow poems. Uh, the day is done. The day is done and the darkness falls from the wings of night as a feather is wafted downward from an eagle in its flight. I see the lights of the city gleam through the rain and mist and a feeling of sadness comes o'er me that my soul cannot resist. A feeling of sadness and longing that is not akin to pain and resembles sorrow only as the mist resembles the rain. So in that poem, in that first stanza anyway, he's talking about the night coming in and the night bringing in the opportunity or the, the, the feeling of, of sadness. And he's looking out and he sees the, the, the town, the gleaming town. And, and he starts thinking about longing and some sadness, but it's not a sorrow. It's not a deep, dark, horrible. It's, it's, it's a sadness and longing that he's resigned to. Uh, that he's accepted, and it's and it's painful, but only as the mist resembles the rain. The rain being a sorrow, whereas the mist is a sadness. And that's kind of what I think it feels like when I hear this song that Dylan sings. He's talking about a sadness, a, but also a resignation and an acceptance of this, the ending of this situation, of this this relationship, and and how the relationship had become past the point of no return. It had gone on and there was no turning back. And, and that's a sad thing to have to accept. And that's, I think that's kind of what the song's about. But I always, when I hear that, that part about, um, you know, um, the, the night uh, comes in a falling, I always think about the falling night and the day is done by Longfellow, okay? I'm not saying that's what Dylan thought about, it's just what I think about. And the silent night will shatter from the sounds inside my mind. I love that. 
the dogs are barking. That's sort of a distraction, you know, the sounds of the day. It distracts you from your thoughts, your deep sadness or whatever. <laughs> and then the night comes in and it's silent. Dogs start barking. You can relax, there should be peace. But of course the mind, that's when the thoughts come in the mind. Ain't it just like the night to play tricks when you're trying to be so quiet? The night, the silence will shatter from these thoughts inside my mind. And it's one too many mornings and a thousand miles behind. One too many. That implies it ain't coming back. That implies we've gone a little too far, right? A day too long in Mississippi, right? Stayed inside of Mississippi a day too long. Um, and then the thousand miles behind. Whenever I hear that, I think of that old Hetty West song, the song that was made famous by Peter, Paul, and Mary and others, 500 Miles, which the song is often uh, said to be about uh, uh, during the Depression, a worker, uh, head of a family perhaps, leaving his family, going on a train to go, to, to go work somewhere with the intentions on coming back. He goes 100 miles, doesn't find anything to work. You make any money. He goes 200 miles, and three. And he gets 500 miles, and it's just he doesn't have a shirt on his back, nothing in his pocket, and he says, "I can't go back this way. I, it's, I've gone too far." And that's kind of what I think about when I, when I hear a thousand miles away, one too many mornings. It's been too long. A thousand miles away, too far back. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Something like that. I love thinking of these old songs. Whenever I hear songs and I hear phrases, it's amazing how many songs come, come to mind. And, and I like thinking of the relationships between the songs. And now, I'm not saying they're intentional. Of course not. It's just how I, my stupid mind thinks. Okay. From the crossroads of my doorstep. I love that. A door being like a crossroads. A place, a, a portal. You know a place where you can go one way or the other. You can go out or stay in, <laughs> right? As a matter of fact, oh, Mama, You've Been On My Mind, which he, he wrote that same year, 1964, and it was an outtake. Uh, it was meant to be on his album, Another Side of Bob Dylan, from the same year, but he didn't do it. He didn't use it. He wrote several songs about the breakup with Susie back in those days, Ballad in Plain D, you know, and, uh, but yeah, I love this song too, Mama, You've Been On My Mind. I, I should do a video about this because I love it so much. So I'm not going to go through the whole song here. But of course, it starts off so well. Perhaps it's the color of the sun cut flat and covering the crossroads I'm standing at. Maybe it's the weather or something like that. But Mama, You've Been On My Mind. And then when he's down at the end, he says, when you wake up in the morning, baby, look inside your mirror. You know I won't be next to you. You know I won't be near. Instead, uh, I'd just be curious to know if you can see yourself as clear as someone who has had you on his mind. That reminds me of this song. He's standing at the doorstep, right? And he's looking back. What he does is he says, I'm standing at the crossroads of my doorstep. My eyes start to fade. I'm starting to lose the focus. I'm starting to look inward. I'm starting to think. And he looks back. As I turn my head back to the room where my love and I have laid. Ooh. If you've ever had a breakup, a relationship end, that's, that's a bitter pill, isn't it? To think about those times, those, those, those moments that you were with that person, like one, two becoming one, and now you're not with them anymore. That's, that's bitter. And I gaze back to the street. So he looks back to the street. I love the alliteration here. I gaze back to the street, the sidewalk, and the sign. Sign on the street says, you don't own me. Sign on the window says, lonely. I love how he talks about signs, the sidewalks, the streets. It's one too many morning and a thousand miles behind. It's a restless, hungry feeling that don't mean no one no good. When everything I'm saying, you can say it just as good. 
you're right from your side and I'm right from mine. It reminds me of um, Tangling Up in Blue where he says, we always did feel the same, we just saw it from a different point of view. We're both just one too many mornings and a thousand miles behind. He's basically saying, look, even if you came back to me or I came back to you, it's, it's done, it's over. Now, on the Hard Rain album from 1976, he adds about another half a verse at the end. He says, I've no right to be here if you've no right to stay. We, we're both one too many mornings and a thousand miles away. I love this song. Fantastic song. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Let me say one other thing. Um, there's a song by Cat Stevens from his 1973 album, Foreigner, that I've always liked called How Many Times. I'm just going to read the lyrics real quick for you. It reminds me of this song of Dylan's a little bit. How many times must I get up, look out and see the same old view? How many times must I wear the same old things and hear the same old things that I do? How many times must I clean this face? How many times must I shine my shoes? How many times must I drink the same old drink and dream the same old dreams that I do? How many times must I pass your place, your place? How many times must I follow you? How many times must I see the same old things when all I should be seeing is you? Because I know one thing, there ain't nothing that could ever ease the pain. But for your line and mine, I want that loving again. So the ending of a relationship, we've all been there, most of us is that way and and when the pain of it the sorrow dies and you've accepted it there's still there's still that lingering sadness that is not akin to pain anymore but resembles sorrow only as the mist resembles the rain it just kind of lingers and sometimes it can linger for years and uh, that's what I think this song's about. But it's that one too many mornings, one too many mornings. Stuck inside, stuck in Mississippi a day too, stayed in Mississippi a day too long. <laughs> Mixing up my songs here. Yeah, it's just, it's just one too many and too much time's passed, too much water under the bridge. But man, I remember laying there with her. I remember the good times, the closeness the passion, the love. And um, that's what the song's about. And I like the fact that it's open. It doesn't mention a specific person. It doesn't mention a specific type of relationship. It could be a relationship with a person. It could be with a, a time or with a thing or a place. Or And uh, it could be used, I uh, thought about, in many ways as you sing. And that's why it's, I think, a very popular song of his. A lot of people have covered it. What do you think? Do you like the song as much as I do? I bet you do. Let me know. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.